Well, um, my name is Dwayne Stevenson. I'm the area representative for MacTech. I'm here. Thank you for coming today uh, to talk about wall graphics, floor graphics, windows. We're going to be uh, breaking this up into two sessions. One, we're going to talk about the products, and then the second is we're going to go out and actually apply it um, to the windows, floors, or the walls. Uh, so as we go through this this discussion, if there's any questions that come up, please ask because your question might help somebody else who's thinking the same thing. And it brings up and opens up the conversation. So everyone learns from it. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to dive in and, um, and just go, go here at it. Today what we're going to talk about, um, there's going to be three window films that we're going to talk about. One's an um, Eric Rest uh, film, or b free films, um, a perforated 70-30% film. And it's not going to be, um, uh, Kind of like the 50 50, 65 35, but this is a 70 30. We have a static clean, we have a white and a clear, and then we've got carpet, uh, carpet graphic that uh, would be used in trade, uh, trade shows, retail outlets. A wall graphic, and then we'll talk about preparation before install, and then hands on. So I've got samples of uh, all the materials, we've got printed samples as well, so you'll walk away with those as well. <clears throat> Can I ask real quick, but maybe by a show of hands, how many people in this room have printers that are actually printing substrate? Um, so everybody in here is printing substrates. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. Yeah, what I'll emphasize with each of the uh, products, what they can print. And I'm going to say, with every one of them, they can print with all technologies, whether it's solvent, UV, latex, or aqueous. All right, so first, on the list is our window graphic uh, B3 films. Uh, it's an aerograph film. Comes in uh, three different shades: it's uh, frosted, dusted, and clear. Um, it's you know it's dry apply, so it has simplification of, of applying it for to, to ease out for the bubbles. Um, we don't have to use water. In fact, we don't. We recommend doing use water because it's aerograph. Um, it's a it's a film that you can reverse print. In fact, I'll have this out here for you. Um, <coughs> um, it could be used for storefront um, applications, um, util, uh, window partitions, commercial type um, windows. Uh, it's a pretty good versatile film. One thing that we do recommend though. This film is, is that it has to have a full coverage print because it is aerogressed. If it doesn't have full print and you're applying it, um, you're going to see squeegee marks. So maybe we can demonstrate that up there. But other than that, it's um, easy to apply and easy to peel. So when it, what's, um, what's being passed around is, a, is an example that shows that it's uh, Reverse print, so you can apply it inside the window, and you can apply it on the outside, depending on, on the window. Uh, one, one caution that we do recommend is that make sure that the window is not tinted if you're going to apply it on the inside. If you do, you won't see the graphic on the outside. Um, in your folders, too, I, I put um, the product guides for each of the materials that we're going to talk about. All right, static link. Have you guys? Um, Use static cling in the past? Is it is it a widely used request? <coughs> it's pretty down and dirty. It's uh, short term, up to six months. Okay, so it's a uh, uh, we do offer it white and, and clear. It's eight film. Uh, it is a film that we do if it's a big film, if it's a big graphic uh, beyond two feet by two feet. We do recommend wet apply. Um, it can be printed with all different uh, technologies. And it can be reverse printed <coughs> as well, but only with solvent inks and latex inks. So if, it's a, if you're using a UV, unfortunately it won't stick to the window. Um, shelf life is six months, so if you do buy it, make sure you use it for the application. Or when you quote it out, when you, when you buy the material, at least quote out what you're going to use for it. Because if it's after six months, it is a static clean. And after six months, the clean, the static um, charge could dissipate. And typically, um, you'll see these in uh, uh, fast food restaurants. If you look on, a, uh, on the windows, you'll see it's a short term. I found this at uh, Walmart. 
this was in front of a convenience store. Uh, but it, it's good for the arsenal that short term, easy to apply, um, promotional type of um, vinyl. Questions? All right, so next up <coughs> is perforated 7030 film. Okay, so you're familiar with uh, perforated films? Okay, so it's familiar 50 50, 60 40, 65 35. Now, this is a 70 30. And what this means is that it's got 70% vinyl, 30% perforation. Um, great for commercial buildings, big graphics, storefront um, properties. Uh, you can use them for cars, buses, uh, or um, trains. But um, for those, I, I would stick with the 50 50. It's got a longer shelf life. This has, not a shelf life, I'm sorry, um, application life. This can be used up to 18 months. 50-50 uh, is typically uh, three years, uh, 64. Why is that? Um, just the, the quality of the, uh, the vinyl. So this is a good quality of the vinyl. That's good. It's cheaper, huh? It should be cheaper. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, so so this uh, this could be printed with latex. It could be printed with solvent. Um, but not easy. Uh, it is a dry applied film. We do recommend for outdoor use uh, up and beyond six months to use an over uh, In fact, we rec actually recommend using an over um, The reason for an over is to protect the window. Because it's, if it's outdoors, you got wind, you got dust, you got uh, environmental hazards that come through. Uh, what it'll do is it'll etch the window really perforated. What the overlaminate does in our taxi. Now, the overlaminate that we recommend is using an overlam with a polyester liner. That way you get the clarity. Because you've got to remember, this is a 70-30. So if you use a, an overlaminate with a paper liner, the visibility of that is going to be less than it would be with uh, a film liner. It's just that it's the coating of the adhesive. It's, it's much smoother. So it's not that thick, or not that thick, the uh, one for that? We do, yes. We do. It's, it's considered an ultra clear so that you don't have the hazing of the of the adhesive on the back. Exactly. So. And usually the hazing of the adhesive is, is it's a product of the liner. So if you if go with a clear polyester liner, you get, you're going to get the ultra clear performance of the adhesive. Uh, and this kind of gives you an example of how you can see. So it's not bad, actually. But um, so we're gonna we're gonna demonstrate this. <clears throat> what I like here's another thing I like about this is that this is a this is a storefront in Reno. I took a picture of it, and they've got a graphic all the way across. If you were to use a, a 50/50, maybe a 60/30, you may not see some of those images from a distance. And if you're if you're a, if you're a retail outlet and you have if you're on a, a a high traffic um, street, you really want your graphics to, to show. And using 70% film with perforated, be able, still be able to see out is, is a pretty good choice for it. Oh, one thing I just wanted to add to the uh, lamination was that um, <laughs> with, the, with the standard adhesive on the laminate, you, know, you put that laminate on anything, it typically will go glossy clear. Like it doesn't matter. But where you'll see a lot of the issues is that where the holes are, where it's not actually making contact with anything. You'll start with that, and then it makes it hazy, so you can't see out of it. Yeah. So that's typically where the issue comes into play. Good point. If yeah. you don't use an overlay, um, and if it gets wet, your your visibility to see through it's, it's going to be right. Bad. So now we're going to talk about um, now we're going to do a demo on floor graphics. And okay, so this is um. Let me, let me I guess I can start with the question. Have you guys been to SGIA? I mean, okay. Um, at SGIA, SGIA in Vegas, um, if you walk in, you'll see a lot of floor graphics. You, typically, this is going to be on low plot pile floor. Um, it's an adhesive that's very aggressive. Once you apply it. And you peel it back; it's not going to leave an adhesive residue. Um, so it's a it's a pretty unique uh, floor graphic. I was in um, 
CVS and Rita. It's kind of like a Walgreens. I don't think you have CVSs here. Uh, Walgreens, right? Anyway, I walked in. They have a pile, a low pile, crap uh, carpet. And I found this uh, graphic. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, you got a retail chain using a material like this. Whether it was ours or not, I don't know. But um, it gives you another talking point with the customers to decorate a floor, to advertise a product, use um, directional uh, uh, arrows to point to something. Uh, it gives you something more to talk about with the customer. Beyond that, this adhesive is very aggressive. So if you have low surface applications, being that um, you're going to buy one roll if you don't have enough, a lot of floor graphics, this can also be used for low surface energy applications. Um, polyethylene, textured wall furnaces. Not that it's good, not like this, but if you need something to stick to a textured wall. Uh, anything that's more difficult to, to adhere to. So what lamb are they using for the floor? The floor? Good question. Um, one that's really important when you do floor graphics is doing an overlamp. Uh, this overlamp is a polyolefin. It's the, the least expensive overlaminate. For this type of application, it's short term, up to three months, two to three months. Um, one of the requirements for the overlamin, it has to be textured, and it has to be OSHA C1028 certified. So what that certification means is that it's been tested by a third party for slip resistant coefficient of friction. So what's important about that is when you do a floor graphic, whether it's carpet, whether it's outside, whether it's on tile, Having an overlaminate that meets that requirement uh, protects you if somebody slips and falls because it meets the OSHA standard. You got that in here? Is that on this? Anywhere in your room? Yes, it would be on the um, on the product guide. But it's always it's something to. It, well, let me ask you this: have, Do you guys do floor graphics besides you know what we're talking about here, or have you done floor graphics? Not at all. Okay, it's a market. Yeah, it is. I got some customers that are looking at right now that's. Uh, if you're doing windows, you're doing walls, talk about floors too. And what we're going to talk about today, this is actually just for carpets, but we have other floor graphics for cement, tile, wood. Um, yeah. Depending on the application, it's another product that they can buy from you, that they can use, and for them to sell their products. So we have um, four over laminates that meet um, the OSHA standard. That's PF6300, which is stocked here, PS6400, which is on this, which is also stocked here, uh, PS6500, and then an IP6000, all textured, uh, different films for different, uh, different uses. Can you tell me what a low energy surface is? Uh, you know, close. A good example of something like that would be like your ATV plastics. Um, you know, the off-road vehicles that they typically don't want mud and stuff to stick to, like those are low-energy uh, surfaces. Something that, you know, they, they typically do not want something to stick to, uh, that's that's considered a lower-energy surface. So I, I always use that as an example because, you know, a lot of people are doing a lot of, like, ATV wraps and, you know, side-by-side -side wraps and stuff like that. So that's, that's where this more aggressive adhesive comes into play, uh, being able to stick to that long term. Yeah, high energy would be glass or uh, real smooth um, surfaces. Low energy would be the uh, texture this would be, or low VOC type paints that are very difficult to adhere to. Mm. This might be a good alternative. Especially nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. VOC is a yeah, this this could be a go to, but with caution because it is very aggressive and once it's stuck. You try to peel it off unless they want it. Unless they want it on there permanently, if you try to peel it off, it could peel the paint. Or so. So don't use it as a temporary sticker on your kid's wall. No, no. Unless you're ready to paint the walls <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> but anyway, that's uh, just another use for for this material. You know, with, uh, floor graphics. All right. So let's see what else. Um, wall graphic. Brutal. One of our biggest selling items. It's a six mil vinyl, it's a matte, <coughs> removable adhesive. 
can be printed with all technologies, uh, great for murals, decals, poster size prints, uh, anything that, um, that um, is going to be covering a wall. It is removable, so you can, it, it, it's designed to remove. But after a period of time, you know, after two years, it, you know, removables can become permanent. We recommend that you, that you do that. Um, if it's low use of VOC paints, um, just test be sure. And, and you understand with, with low VOC paints, uh, it's it's a paints that are let's say volatile so, organic compound is what it is. And the architectural specifications have taken a lot of the stuff that we used to have in paints out of it. Uh, they don't have the. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the projects in there. I mean, the reason why Dale, we do coatings too, and we've had a hell of a time with uh, the graphics that we're going in and putting over. Low VOCs is bad, but when you get to zero VOCs, it's just terrible. Yeah. Because that, we're having to let that paint sit on the walls for 30 to 60 days minimum, and then come back and do almost a 70% alcohol wipe on those areas in order to get that. Yeah. And we use that, we're using that product similar to this, which is the Avery uh, 2611, which is a low tack. I think it's, isn't it six mil, Aaron, or Adam? Uh, 2611. It's pretty close. It is, yeah, six. But it'll fall right off the walls. On yeah. that. <laughs> we've, we've had those problems, but now we finally figured out a way to do it. Um, Thirty days minimum. Sure. We'd like to see sixty days, then go back with almost a fifty to a seventy degree, seventy percent alcohol wipe. Two times. Wash it once, let it dry, go back again. You don't want to sit on there wet because it's gonna it'll affect the finish on it. If you do a quick spray on it, wipe it down, you're gonna leave the integrity of the paint there and then put it on. But I didn't even recommend it yeah, for this right here. So. Yeah, and, and typically you'll find it in darker paints, darker color paints, darker hues. Uh, for some reason, those take longer time to cure. Well, we're staying at IHCs. We do a lot of IHCs, and some of the colors in that are pretty light colors. And with it, and because we're using uh, zero VOC, okay. which is different than low VOC. Low VOC okay. meets the minimum requirements. Uh, but the zero VOC is basically there are no uh, VOC. It's just zero. So it's so, like a silicone. Well, it's yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's it's a little bit better than that. But uh, and we had we put up a bunch of dry erase vinyl uh, stickers on some of our uh, IEC facilities, and we get phone calls back about two days later and say, "Hey, it's lying on the floor." We're going. And this is when we first start started doing it since the VOCs hit this uh, uh, Utah January first. Um, of last year, and they've got so long to comply. So all the paints that were in the dealerships throughout the Salt Lake or the Wasatch Front, they can still sell those, but after they had sold out, then they had to move over to the low VOC or the zero VOCs. So now you're seeing more of it on the shelves than ever before. And so, you know, the masking tapes we were having problems with, uh, yeah. that's, uh, it's really become a, but even on the lighter paints, uh, especially if you get the zero VOCs, and Sherwin Williams, they basically that they have a zero VOC. There's aren't low VOC in the So even on the lighter colors, it's a, so I'm just saying if you're going into an area that's been freshly painted, uh, I would check the paint that was used. If it's low VOCs, I'd either wait 30 days <laughs> uh, minimum, and then I'd make sure I do a, an alcohol wipe or wash on it. Or not only that, but uh, get sample sheets, put them up there, see if they stick. Uh, and if they don't, then wait for it. Time. Uh, in addition to this uh, removable, we also have a permanent safe, safe face sheet, same liner, but with a permanent Oh, really? Yeah. So if the removable doesn't work, then we have a permanent. <coughs> Is there a price difference between the two? Uh, removables could be a little bit more expensive. The removable. But what I, what's really great about this product, it's a six mil, easy to apply, easy to remove. So, again, one of those um, applications where um, bubbling or application use is a good thing. All right. So we talked about uh, talked about three film window film uh, materials. Talked about uh, air grass materials, easy to apply, dry apply. We talked about static clean. Talked about perforated. We talked about uh, floor graphic, talked about the overlimit that's, that's required for it. Uh, and um, 
talked about the log wrapper. Now, next slide is uh, preparation and install. All right, so for the window and wall, pretty much the same uh, prep. Basically, um, and especially for windows, uh, if you're going to put up a window graphic, uh, first clean off with a detergent, you can use uh, Windex. I know Windex can use it, but you do use it to clean off any of the um, any contaminants, organic contaminants. Uh, if it's outdoors, bird droppings, uh, sap from a tree. Uh, once you get that, or paint, chip off paint, then what you do is you wipe the windows with a 7030 IPA, uh, as propyl alcohol, uh, just to clean off any of the Windex uh, film that's on it. If you use Windex, got to clean off because it does leave a film on it. So you need a nice flip off to clean off the film from the, uh, the, uh, the windows. Use a, a, a lint-free cloth. Uh, and we'll do that uh, out there. I prepped some of the windows, but some of it could be used as a, could be the, the, we could do a little bit more of those. For wet applying, uh, we use uh, um, water at 2% two, two or 10 part, 2 part water for some and we'll do that outside. Uh, we'll apply water to, um, what apply to the uh, static cleans. Uh, we'll do the peel back minor hinge method. Swipe left, right, so. The carpet um, application is really easy. Just make sure the carpet's clean, it's not wet, and vacuum. It's a pretty easy application. Yeah. And then the wall, same thing as we would do for the wall. If you guys want one of these, is there a good show and tell to your customers? To show what um, what it is, we've got um, we've got the acrylic and we've got the pens, so we can put them together before you go. Uh, and if you want, just if you want to take them and apply them yourself, um, they're for you to take. Actually, if you apply them yourself, you'll understand how um, how easy it is to apply and re reapply, just to get it done. So these are here for your. And then what we also have here are floor graphic guides, wall graphic guides, and window product guides. Cool. Now, now with the floor graphic, what's great about this is it talks about it demonstrates what uh, different finals you can use for the different floors, and then the overlaminus of the overlaminus. The overlaminus are qualified for the OSHA 1020. The picture on the front, by the way, is a real floor graphic. It's pretty cool. And this is this is one thing about the floor graphics where you can get really creative. Again, where you can talk to your customers and have them get creative with what they want to do. Um, and what this is, this is the actual, floor. this is a museum, a picture of a museum. And the artifacts in the museum. And this was the floor, or I guess the road, that was where these artifacts were dug up. So they made it really authentic and creative. Again, something you can use for the creativity. And then again, for, for the wall graphics, the films, the type of adhesives, and then the overlaminates that we were And then again for the windows, uh, which will include the perforated, the uh, air grass, and the, the permanents that uh, we're, not, we're not talking about today. But these are pretty good guides for, for reference. Did I understand correctly that there's a static clean Clear view perforated window product? No. No? Uh, oh. right that is interesting. It says window view clean. Okay, window view, that's um, that's our brand name. Yeah. So it's kind of perforated little symbol. Yeah. Um, it should have. Yeah. Mm. Sorry for the confusion, but it's, it's not perfect. Yeah. And then one last resource. Is it using it? is our uh, design scale 
application. Uh, yeah. Are you guys um, familiar with this? Have you seen this? It's um, it's interactive. It's an app. You can download it uh, from Apple if you have an Apple uh, product. Um, it can be downloaded um, to a Windows uh, product as well. And basically, what it it is is it's it's an app where you can sit with your customers. Uh, you can brainstorm with them. There's um, let's take a. I wish I could show this. If you go through here. <laughs> What was that called? Mac Packet. Uh, Designscape. Designscape 3. It shows a Mac Packet app in the store. Did you find it? Yeah. Okay. So what this is, um, it, it shows where wherever there is a, a Mac Tech icon, uh -huh. click on it, and it'll go to it, and it'll pull up what we would recommend for that application. For this instance, this one application we recommended Google. The overall analytics that we would recommend for it. We can request, um, we could pull up the product literature or technical guides. Uh, so pretty much everything that you have at your fingertips. But one thing that I really, that I really like about this besides the, the technical guides is the gallery. Now, this is what's really cool. If you talk with your clients, to help them brainstorm with whatever it is that they want to do. Sometimes they may not know what they want to do. And just having pictures at your fingertips of other applications can help them think, hey, that's pretty cool. I could do a wall, I could do a window, maybe even a foreground to go with it. And so with this, um, you have different uh, applications. This is a picture of, uh, this is a before graphic that's used in an elevator. So, I mean, you look at that, holy cow, you look at that. It's pretty cool. Um, see, this was uh, this would be an elevator. You, you can uh, um, decorate an elevator. So as you go through this, uh, you could go through and look at different applications. Um, uh, this would be a, another elevator. There you go. There's another market. But um, I think you guys understand what, uh, what we want. This is a boat. Uh, you know, they made it a wicker boat. So, but anyway, I, what I love about this is the, the gallery that shows different pictures that you can show the customers. It's free. There's uh, there's no commitment to buying anything. Um, it's at your disposal to to use. Um, so. Adam, where did the yeah. images come from? Oh, where do the images come from on the MacTech site? Are they from royalty-free purchase, the purchase available? Um, those images are actually applications that are used with MacTech material. So, um, uh, Just ideas, not the original files that you could then print Wicker. You know? Oh, right, right. Oh, oh right, right. Yeah. 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 So in other words, they're just concepts. Yeah. They're not actually images that can be used. Correct. Um, profiles are on a website for, for our materials. I think that's it. Uh, we do have sample roles that are available. If, if you have applications that, that, uh, that you're thinking of that you'd like to use, uh, sample roles are 27 inch by 10 feet. Um, excluding the clean, clean will be sample sheets. Um, you can send sample sheets of any of the products, so at least you can test it for the application before you before you buy the rolls. And these these you can actually order out of the app, right? Yes, absolutely. You can yeah. request them right out of the app. Yeah. yeah, from the app you can request uh, sample sheets. <coughs> samples <coughs> samples would have to come through. Sure. Yeah. That's sheets. that's one thing I've actually found that's pretty cool about the uh, the app is that while you're showing customers, you know, ideas and examples of what you can do, you can bring up all the product literature on that, the technical data, everything you need for that specific item that you're looking at. And if customers like, yeah, I'd like to actually fill it and see what it's all about, you can go on and order right there a sample sheet of it or whatever to be shipped either to, to the end user or to you guys. Yeah. So. Two more things I want to just pass out before, uh, before we get started. Uh, it's 
Speaking of wall graphics, these are new materials that oh, we don't have. Yeah, so these are pretty cool. Um, these are, um, you can use these for mural. They're textured. Uh, one is um, kind of a, I don't want to say a knockoff, but it's a, 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 an equivalent to Phototex. Phototex, is it Phototex? Mm -hmm. Phototex, yeah. But it's a vinyl, it's not an actual, uh, what, is, what is that? Uh, it's a fabric. It's a fabric, yeah. yeah. Okay. Where ours is, a, it's just a textured vinyl. It gives the same look and appearance, but it's a vinyl. A lot of people are using this for a lot of wall murals, stuff like that, that people are putting up, so it's actually a really cool fact. I have some on my door yeah. in my office. It is pretty cool, yeah. So anyway, I wanted to pass it out again, you know, um, something you can share with the customers, something new and different. If you want to do a wall mural that has a, a canvas feel to it, uh, you've got a material that pressure sensitive that you can use for it. So removable? Uh, there's the... Repositionable, I mean, is what I meant to say? Yeah, the, the, let me see, the fresco should be removable, yes, clear removable, the fresco, mm -hmm. the mural is a permanent, um, as long as it's, you know, once you apply it and you pull it back quickly, it, it can be repositioned. So, you repositionable usually means transfer to one, transfer to a different wall? You can do that, yeah, for repositioning. Yeah. If, but by doing that, what, what happens when you use the adhesive once, it'll deaden it. So when you apply it again for a second time, it's not going to have the same stick. So the stick on the first time won't stick as well the second time. It'll stick, but it won't. But anyway, I wanted to share that with you because uh, those are, again, pretty unique. Uh, yeah, I was just looking at the floor graphics media table here. Um, this product, Street Wrap, it says uh, for unsealed concrete walls and floors, unsealed asphalt floors. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if I was like putting something into like an auto shop on the floor, that would probably be a little bit more robust adhesive. As long as, long as it's not coated. The, the flooring is coated, uh -huh. and you use that product, it's not coated. It won't come. Okay. Yeah. All right. If it's, if it's not coated, yes. You can use it. You mean like a painted floor surface? Uh, painted floor, it'll, it'll pull the paint. Or if it's coated with an uh, acrylic uh, or um, a varnish. A varnish. Okay. okay. It will not be able to just permanently stick? It will permanently stick. You won't, get it. Yeah. <coughs> you, you won't be able to power wash it. Yeah, it, it, it'll be there. We 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 did some of that too. We couldn't. I mean, we took the pressure washer out there. We couldn't get it up. How about like a grinder? <laughs> sure. uh, okay, grinder. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. grinder will touch it. There you go. Yeah. 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 So, so is there what would be like a step down in intensity from that? Um, no. Probably the HO two, um, the uh, carpet. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The street wrap is our most aggressive piece. Yeah. And for you know the sidewalk out here, it's it's a perfect application. Okay. For the auto dealership, if it's not if it's not coated, also. Okay. Yeah. If it is coated, does that actually give you hope that you could get it off though? If it is coated. No. Oh. All right. And what's 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 beautiful about it? If it's not coated, like the sidewalk mm -hmm. out here, um, you could just peel it off. Oh. In, in one, you don't have to spray uh, power washing okay. into a thousand pieces. Uh -huh. yeah. So it sits on top of uh, the, the cement, and then piece of this. So would the uh, the stuff for carpet be reasonable if if it was a coated it's surface? Okay. Then? I'm gonna say yes, but let me make a let me before the day's up. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. As far as adhesive go, um, the street wrap is our most aggressive. The H two O would be our second most. Okay. And then it has like a temperature usage range, and the unsealed one, you know, is like thirty two degrees to two twenty five. The others are like negative forty. So if you're like in a place where it gets really cold, I want to be. 
I want to stick to maybe the carpet one, even if it's not quite as aggressive. Uh, yeah, okay. and that would be the service range. So okay. it would have to be applied in you know, temperatures above 40 degrees. Oh, okay. All right. So once it's cured, and then it can, you know, it can be negative 40 degrees outside. Right. Or 20 degrees. I thought it was the same. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, are these um, are these window products, particularly this window clean, only recommended for indoors? No, no, it can be used for outdoors. It's really? short term outdoor. Oh. Okay. And, and indoor. Um, we recommend up to six months outdoor. Yeah. And that's because um, it breaks down in the sun? Or? The static will start dissipating. Oh. It will start seeing bubbles. Yeah. And for the clear, it will start to, to yellow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so short, short term use. Short term promotional. What's the, do you know what the rate of um, length of time is uh, for the, the um, perforated fill? Eight, out, outdoor? Eight, 18 months without ink. So I would think, uh, depending on the ink technology that we use, uh, but if you were just to apply it for outdoor use, up to 18 months for the 70, for the 70 Is there a product that goes five plus years? Yes. Uh, that would be our 50 fill. Uh, and that, um, I believe it's um, three years. Yeah. And that's typically used for a car, car type application. So you can see more visibly out of it because you have 50% vinyl, 50% perforation. Is there an application that you're thinking of for? Yeah, south, south and west facing windows. I've got clients all the time trying to get a product on there that will last five plus years. Uh, if and you it's a calendar. I mean, it <coughs> could be a calendar if it would last, but it's just a flat window pane yeah. on an exterior building. But they're south and west facing, so they get abuse of the sun. I'd go 50 50. And I'd use an over laminate that has a UV blockers for the duration. And does MacTac sell a combination of product like that? We do. Yes. So it's a, do you guys, do they sell um, kits so that they're up? laminate and perforated kit? We don't. Not, not for window. Well, we might. I'm not sure. We'd have to look. I don't think we don't stock the 50-50 from MacTech when we have some other brands, but. Okay. Oh, we, yeah, we, I think we're doing what, the 70? The 70-30 for, yeah, the MacTech, 70-30. Yeah. Is that a better, or, or is that a better buy? It just gives you more surface. Um, oh, the print. Print surface. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And shorter it's just the perforation on the. What? The 7030 has shorter life in the sun than the 5050 does, so uh, that's, that's the 18 month stuff. So you're going to want the 5050 probably. Yeah. 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 And there might be another brand that's longer duration. Maybe you guys All right. So, Adam, shall we uh, take to the next step?